Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Often I talk about specific cuts that players make in offenses. So I want to go through some of the real big ones, the most common ones, so you can understand how they work and recognize them instantly when they happen in the NBA. The first cut I want to show you is called the UCLA cut and it's based on the UCLA high post that John Wooden ran and won all those championships with. And it's very simple. We start out with a guard on top and he makes a traditional guard forward pass to initiate. At this point, he's gonna rub his man off of the high post down toward the basket, and the high post will step out. He throws in the ball here, goes to the screens down, and here he comes, dribble at him, pitch, and shoot it. So, the cut itself is called the UCLA cut. So whenever you see a guy throw the ball to the wing, and on the strong side of the, of the ball, cut along the high post and look to get that ball open. That is what I mean when I say UCLA cut. Let's see it one more time. He cuts, rubs his man right off that pick. So, nice shot. Here's the thing. We almost never see this successful anymore in the NBA. Why? Because the guard doesn't quite rub his man off that screen the right way. It's a wasted cut these days and it's very frustrating. So the key to this is what, we, what you need to do and you'll see good guards do this is as they throw the ball here, he's going to walk two steps to his left. And I mean walk, really slow down. And then he'll explode off of that high cut and hit him, give it to him, give it to him. That is the cut. That is what you're supposed to get. And I know guys who played in the 60s and 70s in that offense who got that cut and got that layup all the time. Because imagine that, if I'm not in the right position defensively there, he should get a layup every time. So let me show us that, the walking two steps and then cut. Walk, 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 now explode. Boom, hit him. Good, good, finish, good. Here's how the Bobcats ran the UCLA cut with Ridenauer actually getting open but not receiving the pass. Then he gets involved in flex action, which we'll show you later, but all this movement serves to open up good post position for Al Jefferson, who just goes to work. Here's how Ohio State used the UCLA cut, and it looks just like the Triangle High Post series, which has a screener pivot and set an inside ball screen. Watch how they swing the ball and get good spacing, eventually leading to a shuffle cut, which we'll show you later as well, for an open three. The next cut I want to talk about is the flex cut. And you can get this out of a lot of different offenses. We see Horns get this, we see D'Antoni get flex all the time out of this, and the Spurs. I'm gonna show you the basic action of the flex and so you understand why it can be pretty devastating when you run it on the weak side of the defense. So, we start out here with the ball on the wing and we have the corner cut across to screen for the big guy. Here comes the big guy, comes right here on the block, hold up there for one second. Now, this is the main part of the action. Everyone gets concerned with the, uh, the post up. They think, oh my God, we gotta watch this. When that's not really part of the play, the play is the high post guy coming down, screening the screener. And there comes Serene popping up, hit him there, and he gets the wide open shot. Okay, it's very difficult to defend that because Serene's man, come back here, Serene, where you, like do that whole action again from the beginning. I want you to understand that just the notion of the cross screen, come on, set the cross screen, and hold up for one second, let's get one more defender. Uh, Mike, come over here and guard Malik. The, this is what's gonna be confusing for the defense, is as he comes and sets the screen, I'm here, I'm here, and I see this. Now, if we're not talking well enough, right, he's gonna come right across, we both get tied up, and he gets the layup, right? So now, if I have to switch, let's just say I switch here, now he's got an easy sit and duck to screen because you're all figuring out, I don't even know who I'm guarding now because we just switched. I got your man, you got mine. You come right down, take him out, okay? And now there's nothing left. Now, if you get that far, do that one more time. So here comes Serene. He's gonna screen. Let's say we do a good job and we don't even have to switch. Keep going, keep going. You got it. Now I got it. Now I'm stuck. But what I got here, now all that motion is gonna open up him down here for the, uh, the open up for the layup on a pocket pass, okay? So that's the, the flex offense, the flex cut, and it gives you three people working in tandem on the weak side, makes it very difficult for the uh, defense to defend. Here's an example of why screen the screener is so good. Everyone is concerned with the cutter across the lane. They forget about the first screener who pops out on top for the wide open three. It doesn't always have to be for a jump shot as Jared Jack curls around the pin down to shoot a floater. But if you need a jumper, having a great shooter like Clay Thompson set that first screen is a good move. 
Our next cut is called the zipper cut. And it's a really good cut because it gets you into your offense without having to deal with a lot of extra pressure by dribbling over to the wing and then getting a pass at the top. So let me show you how that works. Miguel on top is going to bring the ball over as a point guard. And that triggers the zipper cut itself, which is simply the man going underneath the ball, the, uh, the big man and cutting up here, it's like a zipper. Throws the ball here. Normally, what the Spurs love to do is they'll come and screen and roll right away. So here comes the screen and roll. Serene uses it, rubs shoulders, comes right off and gets an easy shot. Gives you a lot of uh, opportunities because when you have motion out of a screen and roll is when it's more devastating than not. So you can imagine Serene's man has to chase him all the way around. And we'll show you this. Why don't we do it in real time and I'll show you. So I'm guarding the ball, uh, Serene, right? So now I got it. I'm chasing, I'm chasing, I'm chasing. Oh boy, now I'm late here. And now, oh boy, here goes the screen, right? I'm never going to keep up with that. And it's very difficult for NBA players who are good on offense to keep up. So that's why the zipper tends to work really well, especially for the Spurs. Here's the zipper by the Spurs that turns into the loop for Tony Parker, who reads the defense and comes back on the same side he started. The Blazers run it into a pick and roll, get a bit of weave action out on top, and then slide Wes Matthews up in a weak side fill for the three. The last cut I want to show you is called the shuffle cut. One of my favorites because it's a direct link to the history of basketball when Bruce Drake used to run this, when Dean Smith was his assistant way back in the day running the shuffle offense. So the shuffle cut is pretty tricky. We're going to show you how it works in the context of the Princeton a little bit. So it starts basically with the ball on top of the guard spot. We have another guard over here. And he dribbles to the wing and pitches. Pitch it to him. Now, this will trigger a nice swing pass and then boom, shuffle cut. Right off of that high post for the layup. Now, the reason any kind of shuffle cut is defined that way when you have the ball on the strong side there and you have a weak side back screen in the high post area. So any kind of action like that is called a shuffle cut. Real easy when you want to describe that for other coaches or, or explain how that offense got that shot. Very devastating because particularly if I'm guarding him and we do that same action again, let me just show you how, why this is so devastating. Dribble pitch, so I'm guarding him. Now make that pass. Now watch this, I call it out back screen, back screen. Well, I have to probably help, right? If I have to help, what does that open up? Yeah that. That's going to be wide open to flash and get it whatever he wants. If I come up, then he gets it right back. So it's a very, uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I love the shuffle cut. The Blazers run a nice shuffle cut for Batum, but have Aldridge then screen for Lillard out of the corner. As Batum gets position, Lillard curls for the nice pass and layup. The Heat use the shuffle cut to get LeBron post up position down low. They don't trigger any other action, but not a problem when you have LeBron getting that kind of post position. He can ISO and get you a bucket. So there you have it, sports fans. Those are four cuts that we see a whole lot of in the NBA. And uh, if you ever have any questions about how it works, there you go. And don't forget, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win.